Uh, so Hungry Joe is a social realist horror okay. um, about a young single mum trying to deal with the fact she's struggling to love her apathetic child that is born with a, an insatiable hunger. Okay, and where did the initial idea for it come from? Um, basically, we were talking about a real-life guy with a sort of similar case that was not quite as extreme, and then we were sort of trying to frame how we would do that as a short. It was like, well, it's got to be a horror, mm. it's got to be about the mum, because the whole thing is that he's not really kind of a very emotional person and stuff like that. It's just yeah, it's a blank it's, slate of a person, yeah. It's based on a, what, 16th, 17th century French, French tale about a guy called Terrer. Oh, okay. Is this a guy who was like eating like hairpins and stuff like that, or am I thereabouts? Yeah, like he's he was kind of around during like Napoleon and stuff like that. He was uh, yeah, he would eat like a sort of whole banquet. Oh, I think food. I have heard of yeah, this guy. Yeah. Oh wow. It's kind of like the French sort of like Sawney Bean or Sweeney Todd, that right. kind of um, that kind of vibe. Interesting. And yeah. when did you come on board? Um, as in in the film? Yeah, did, or? You no, know, sorry. Did you read the script? When did you? Read oh the yes. Script? Yeah, uh, quite early on actually. Yeah, yeah Paul kind of um, ha yeah handed me the script and said have a little read of that and. I didn't really know too much about it, to be honest. And then I read it, and I was like, oh. <laughs> what was that initial reaction, though? Interesting. <laughs> interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, very good. Not what I was expecting. Um, I think it's very unusual to see this kind of film in the environment that it's been set in, in a very urban kind of working class environment. You wouldn't yeah. necessarily expect to see those two things together, but that's what these two guys do so incredibly well. So, yeah, it was just a no-brainer, really. And. Was the film conceived as a short in your head or is the idea potentially to make it into a longer feature? It's a short at the moment, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you always kind of make these things hoping that, you know, in your head you're always kind of half writing what the feature version it would be. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily just a proof of concept. It has to stand on its own two feet yeah. as a short film and everything like that. So it was initially like, yeah, this would be a short sort of monster of the week style like horror, but then it became a bit deeper when Laura's character came in and she started bringing all this other really cool stuff into it. But, and it's no. that thing as well, it's, it's not just a proof of concept, but a proof of tone as well, and whether you can do these high concept stories yeah. in the social realist environment that we like to make films in. Yeah. And so it was almost an experiment in that regard as well. Yeah. Um, and, and you know, talking about it being a monster of the week thing, the film is about the mother and not the it's monster. It's a human yeah. story, actually. It's not, very, it's not really about a monster, because he's not a monster. No. It's, it's a very, you know, if you watch it and you watch it, for what it is, you should really feel a bit sorry for, for Joe okay. and understand. But I don't think he's a monster. I think he loved his mum very much. Okay. Yeah. And it's quite it's quite rare, especially at this festival, to see genre um, shorts and things like that. You mentioned the social realism that was important mm. for you to get, important for you to nail the tone. What were the challenges of getting that right for the film? I mean, it was more like we were kind of working from a social realist tone outwards. It wasn't like we just f sort of made a horror and said, well, what if we could do this social mm. realist? That was kind of where we started from. And then, I mean, horror is like any other genre, basically. It's like this, there's a series of techniques and everything that you can bring to it. But that's just the world that we always make our films in. We shoot in the same locations. We use a lot of the same actors and stuff like that. And it's more, if it's about the characters, then it doesn't really matter what genre you're, genre you're working in. So we just sort of try to work from the characters yeah, and the setting really, yeah. outwards, and then and then add in the horror, the yeah. Isn't it? And everything else kind of comes from from that. Oh yeah. yeah. The, the, the danger is that you allow yourself to be driven as a director and as actors by the concept, mm -hmm. yeah. more so than the characters within that concept and within that world. I really like that answer. That that's the bottom line, you know. It's it's very easy for us to go as about this guy that don't stop eating, yeah, and then just throw a load of cliche at that and really mm. go with and, and make that driven by the action and all the kind of stuff he gets up to. But actually, if you bring all that back to the actual setting and the characters are part of that story and explore those as, as deep as you might yeah. in, in a high concept commercial horror film. Yeah. You end up with something hopefully a little bit more richer. Excellent. And what do you hope the reaction is today? I mean, it is a horror at the end of the day, so we do kind of want to get under people's skin a little bit. I don't think it's necessarily the kind of horror that's going to make anyone jump out of their skin no, or like check that. under their bed at the end of the night, but hopefully people will stay with people a little bit. Yeah. So as long as, hopefully it just gets some people talking. You know, a couple of walkouts wouldn't be... <laughs> it's repulsive, yeah. but it yeah, yeah. has heart.